Creating Custom Actions with Macrovisions Admin Studio. What is a custom action? Well, an action is any of the many things that take place during the course of a Windows installer installation. Standard actions are those that are included in a Windows installer installation by default. Things such as create folders, which creates empty folders for components, create shortcuts, create shortcuts, um, write registry values, sets up registry information, etc. There are quite a number of standard actions that come in a standard Windows installer installation. And beyond that, if there's something not included that you'd like to do with your package, Microsoft allows you to create what we call a custom action, which allows you to run executables, DLL functions, scripts, etc. And that is, of course, what we'll be talking about here. Just what can a custom action do? It can run an executable, which is what we'll be discussing primarily. It can also run scripts. VB script and JavaScript are supported natively. You can run DLL functions. Um, those DLLs must be written in C or C++. And finally, there's a custom action type for displaying an error message, returning failure, and terminating the installation. But what we'll be demoing here in this presentation is running an executable and um, with a command line installation provided by a vendor. The source for your custom action can be in any number of different places. The first we'll talk about here is from a, the binary table. The binary table is a table in the database where temporary files can be stored for the course of the installation. So the executable is, is actually generated from a temporary binary stream. When the custom action is invoked, the stream data is copied to the temporary file, which is processed depending on the type of custom action. Usually this is your best choice, um, and it's useful if you don't want the file that you're using for the custom action to remain on the target system after the fact. The next option is to use files copied during installation. The location of the custom action code is determined by the resolution of the target path for this file. Therefore, this custom action must be called after the file has been installed. From a property reference, the target column of the custom action table contains a command line string for the executable identified in the source column. Same goes for custom actions using the directory table as a reference. However, quotation marks must be used around long file names and the value is treated as formatted text so it may contain references to properties, files, or directories. And finally from script code, the target field of the custom action table contains the script code itself for the custom action as a string um, of the, the literal script text. Um, if you're doing a VB script or a JavaScript, then this would be where your script lived in the package. But in the case of um, what we'll be demoing here, an executable, um, the best choice is to use the binary table. When to run your custom action is another important thing to consider. As in the case of standard actions, custom actions that are scheduled to run in the schedule, uh, the install UI sequence or the admin UI sequence only run if the user interface is set to run at the full level. So a silent installation or one assigned through group policy um, will not run any actions placed in those sequences. Um, some standard actions to, to consider when you're placing your custom action is uh, cost finalize. If you are running an installed file, the custom action must be sequenced after cost finalize so that the file may be resolved. Install validate. If the custom action changes the installation state of features or components, it must be sequenced before the install validate action. Install files. 
if the source file is not already installed on the computer, um, deferred in script, custom actions must be sequenced after the install files. Install finalize, you want your custom action to take place before this, which is the final action in the uh, sequence. Conditionals are also important to consider. A condition can be used to determine when or under what circumstances a custom action should execute. Depending on how your installation is authored, the remove property may not equal all until after the install validate function. This means that any custom action that depends on remove equals all must be sequenced after the install validate action. A custom action may check remove to determine whether a product has been set to be completely uninstalled. So you would typically say if remove equals all, you're doing an installation. If remove is not equal to all, there's an uninstall taking place. And then you can sequence and um, conditionalize your custom actions based on that. We will now demonstrate creating a custom action within Admin Studio. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use the admin script editor to create a simple script that just displays a message box. Um, I'll use this little wizard here to create the message box script. And um, using Kickstart, we'll just display where the script's running from and what arguments were passed to it. With the admin script editor, we can make this into an executable that we can use for um, to simulate an installation uh, provided by a vendor. This script could just as easily shell out um, any command line we wish. To create our custom action, the first thing we'll do here from within Admin Studio is launch the Install Shield Editor and create a new project. We'll go into the Installation Designer, Custom Actions, and then up here we right-click and choose Custom Action Wizard. Welcome, and here we get into it. For a name, choose a descriptive name. Um, it can't include spaces, and it must start with a letter or an underscore. Comment is obviously for internal use only, just to help yourself. For the action type, um, we talked about the different types that are available um, in our presentation, but here for the demo, let's choose Launch and Executable, which is what we're going to be doing. And for Location, we would like to run it from the binary table. For the source, we'll hit Browse and choose the executable we created previously to be used as our setup or our simulation of a setup. And then here in the target field, we can enter what command line parameters we want to pass to that executable. Next, we have a number of other options to choose. Um, normally, you would want to wait for it to finish processing. Otherwise, it can trigger uh, asynchronously and, and run while the setup closes out. So we'll choose that. Um, ignore the return code. Um, that can get you into some trouble if you have an error and uh, the custom action keeps failing. In script execution, deferred execution in the system context. Execution scheduling, we'll say always execute. Now down here, we'll leave this absent from the UI sequence because we're um, probably going to be doing this as a silent install. So let's place this down at the bottom.
and for condition we'll say if remove is not equal to all which means presumably there's an installation taking place Then we have a summary of the, our choices that we've made. And there's our conditionalized custom action. Now we need to account for uninstall separately. Um, the Windows installer isn't going to handle that automatically. So we will uh, clone this custom action that we've made. Let's rename this. This will be our uninstall action. And now we'll just go into the wizard again and make the changes we need to make. This is all good. We'll change our switch here for uninstall. And the same choices here all apply. Now to run only during uninstall, we'll place this down below our other custom action. And for a condition, we'll say if remove does equal all. And remember, remove is a public property, so case is important. It should be all caps. And now we have our custom actions. Now because and Windows installer package requires at least one component. We're going to go ahead and add in a registry entry so that this installation has something to actually install. It doesn't know our custom action is going to be installing files, so Windows installer itself just requires something. So we'll create a new registry key. To do that, we have to choose a feature, so we're creating a new feature, and then in order to have our registry entry exist in a component, we have to create a component. So we'll create this footprint component within the new feature. And now that we have something to work with, we can go ahead and specify our registry entry that we want to include in that component. Under software, I'll create a packages sub key and then you can use this for inventory purposes um, if you follow this for all of your packages or something similar to it um, by including date here in brackets that's a property so we end up with the actual date it was installed and that's something that you could um, inventory at a later date or make some use of so that you're not wasting it uh, we compile this MSI and we have ourselves a MSI wrapper for our setup. Now just to quickly illustrate that what we did actually does work, we'll run a um, minimal GUI installation here with QB, which just performs the installation showing only the progress bar. The installation is relatively quick because we're only installing a single registry entry. But our custom action should kick off here in a second. And we see the install argument is passed as we specified for installation. So just to illustrate the functionality of the uninstall, we use the slash x, which uninstalls. Again, the custom action will kick off again, and this time we'll see the uninstall parameter specified. Um, naturally, this command line installation is just showing us that it's doing it what we're telling it to do, but it could be a silent installation or um, the installation of a prerequisite for the package that you're working on. So there we have it. Just to quickly summarize, use conditions to control execution. 
Have it only install when you're installing. If you're uninstalling, you have to consider this on your own and take it into account through its own custom action. Because Windows installer functionality is going to be present in your command line setup just because you've wrapped it in an MSI. Other than meeting GPO deployment requirements, this doesn't offer any of the benefits of Windows installer. You're not going to get advertising or selling or rollback or all the different command line options available. Um, it's just going to wrap up your executable and do exactly what you told it to do. So uninstall, you need to account for, install, same thing. Basically, anything you want the package to do um, when you're working with custom actions, you're going to have to specify explicitly. As always, if you have any questions, please um, discuss them in the forums, particularly the package development forum. There's um, plenty of people there, including myself, that have a lot of experience with this and can help you with any problems you run up against or questions that I haven't answered here. Thank you.